Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrab and Create, and we're working on Cottage Life, and we're going to do page four and five. We're going to do them together because they are going to be a mirror image of each other. And this is a design that I've used lots of times. And if you make many, if you make very many, many albums, <laughs> you find that you uh, repeat some of your patterns. It's just one of the things that happens. Okay, so for each side, you're going to have two flaps. You're going to have um, a small flap and a wide flap. And I'll tell you what these are. This is four and a half by seven. Four and a half by seven, you're going to score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. And this one is six and a half by seven. Six and a half by seven. You're going to score a half inch on the six and a half inch side. So you've got one for page, one of each for page four and five. Okay. Now, let's see. I have a pocket that's going to go in here too. So I'm trying to decide. Yeah, the flap is going to go in first. Now, I have a decision to make. <laughs> I don't want, let me show you what I mean. I don't want my um, two score lines to be stacked on top of each other. So I have two options. One is to inset the second hinge and the other is to do this, turn this inside out and then we're going to attach this to the inside of the small flap and that means I need to move my magnet and this to the outside. So that means, and it's counterintuitive, you're gonna install the, the smaller of the two first and you're gonna want this on the away side. This is fine, this is the outside. There we go. And then this is going to actually be installed right here, just above the score line, like so, okay? Like I said, it's kind of counterintuitive uh, but then, when it's in its closed position, you only have one score line exposed. I'm going to turn it around. So, sorry, I know it's hard to see with all this stuff everywhere. So there's my score line, there's my hinge. I'm going to install it on this side. And I want to be far enough away from the score line that the flap will function properly. And if you're uncomfortable with this, you can stack them. And then the other thing you can do here too is, you know, apply a little bit of glue and that'll give you some wiggle time. Okay, so now you see how we have a single hinge here and then of course the pocket opening to the pocket page. So that is page four and, though, and that's some of the interactive elements. I need to burnish that into place. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I have a pocket and I can't remember what I have decided to do, so I gotta look at this real quick. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So I have to make my pocket deeper because this needs to reach over the pocket or be a little bit shy and I want it to reach over. So this is, I think, three and a half. Yeah, so I'm gonna make it four and a half inches. It's going to be four and a half by eight. Four and a half by eight. Four and a half by eight. Okay. Now we are going to score three of the four sides to create a pocket. And then we're going to miter the corners. Hope everybody's doing well. I like this design, one, because it, I think it really sh showcases how you can match patterns with Graphic 45. But also, um, as the flaps get progressively larger, you can get more and more photos on them. So, and then at the very end of it, you've got a nice pocket so you can put even more photos in it. 
you know, um, where as on the flaps, you know, you can't, you can't stack them, but in a pocket you can put a handful. Can I verify that? Four and a half, yeah. doing well. I've got spring fever. I think my husband does too because he's cleaning out the garage. Woohoo! So I've mentioned this in other videos but I like to put the two edges in first because you're going to slide something in this way. And if you do it this way, it's going to slide down, and then the next thing it's going to hit is this. So that helps guide things all the way into the pocket. It doesn't mean you won't hit this, but it helps. The other um, thing that you can do, and I used to do this, but I don't know, I got away from it somehow, is um, tape the two sides and glue the bottom. Okay, let's get back to the page. So now this is the spine side, that's where the pocket's gonna go. It's gonna go flush on the edge next to the spine. I'm not going to do that yet because I think I'm going to move. I'm going to move this magnet to the flip side. I think I did the same thing getting ready on the other one. One of the nice things about putting the magnet on the flap is then I am less likely to forget to install it. But occasionally I need to move it, so there's a up and a downside. Now this, because of the multiple size flaps, um, is going to have two sets of magnets. And I will try to make up for that somewhere else in the book and have no magnets. I like to try to go back and forth that way so you're not there's not multiple magnets per page. I know it gets expensive. Also, the pages start to stick together if there's too much conflict. Now, it's important to have your magnet actually on your pocket because once you start putting a bunch of stuff in your pocket, your magnets get further and further apart and, um, and then they cease to function at some point. So try to remember that any flap over a pocket needs to reach far enough that you've got room for a magnet and some space around it to get good adhesion on your designer paper. Tip of the day. Okay. Now let's put some pretty papers down. So I've got them all lined up here. It's gonna be the, this one here is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. I've already turned and inked these, so they should go in pretty quickly. Okay, the second one is going to be this beautiful green which comes from the patterns and solids 
and it's just a solid. So this is nice. This is actually a six by seven finished flap. So plenty of space for photo or even two photos, slightly staggered. Okay, then let's go ahead and add the back side here. I'm gonna use, I think I'm doing this, but I moved my pocket, so I gotta think that through. So that's that. This is supposed to be blue. Actually, this blue. Then I was gonna do this, and then this. Do this and this. Let's see how that looks closed. No, I don't like it. I definitely want the pink here, so we're going to trim this down to cover the pocket. And we're going to color block. Uh, this pink is also from the Patterns and Solids. I'm using Powder Puff in Mahogany. I want to thank everybody for taking time to respond to my questions from the last video. I really appreciate it. For now, I'm going to continue to uh, maintain the current format where I hold all videos until the complete album is ready. And uh, if sometime in the future I, I change that, it won't be a radical departure. Um, I might just, I don't know. It's just something to think about. I know that YouTube is algorithm is a little bit more friendly if you're releasing uh, multiple times a week instead of once every 10 days or whatever it is I'm doing. Um, so, and the goal of all of that really is to get exposure, you know, and um, more views and more subscribers. And so anything, you know, I can leverage from YouTube to help uh, present us as a recommendation. I try to do if it's not going to create too much discomfort to you guys. I want it to still be, you know, usable. For those of you that have been with us for some time. Patterns and solids, patterns and solids. Okay, now I think I might do this. And I'm gonna dis we're gonna decide together real quick. And that. So that's one option. The other option is this. Hmm. I like this. Pink is going to go in. So this is page four, build two. Page four, build two. Build one was the cover. I gotta tell you, the, this is the Nina, the ivory, the cream. I like it. Um, I really love Nina paper in general, but it sure feels thinner than the black, and I don't know why. I don't know if that's in my head or not. It just feels like the black is more forgiving. Okay, now this is probably a little bit too big, and I'm fine with that, because we're gonna slip it inside the pocket um, and then create the color block on the other side. 
Um, let me make sure I've inked my sides before I put it down. And I have. Okay, let's make sure it fits in the pocket. Okay, as per usual, the leading edge, the edge we're pushing into the pocket, we're going to leave void of glue. That way we can push it in and pull it back out without leaving a trail of glue and gluing our pocket shut. It just makes it a lot easier. If there's any goo on your on your panel, it's hard to get under the pocket. And I'm a big fan of getting into the pocket. I think it just helps everything go in, slide in and out of your pocket better. That's a little too much. That looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. Okay, what am I gonna put in the pocket? I have made, I've made a couple of different inserts and this is a four by six insert. And this is a four by six insert also. And so I'm just gonna put those both in there. There we go. Now I'm probably gonna do a little embellishing here, but I'm gonna wait, finish page five, and then collectively look at the layout across from itself and then decide you know, how to further embellish it. One of the things that's important if you decide to put, especially dimensional elements, uh, embellishments, is to make sure if you put something here, you don't put something here because they're gonna run into each other. And also remembering that your pages are gonna slide slightly as you open and close your book. So to, to keep your embellishments on different planes um, as you travel down the page. So if you wanted to put something here, you might put something else here. Um, so those are just uh, some design um, constraints that you need to consider so that your pages open and close and that you don't have a constant conflict with um, two of your elements fighting each other, bending each other, or potentially even ripping one of them up. Okay, so I'll get back to that in a little bit. So I'm gonna go offline and I'm gonna do page five. It's exactly the same. And then I'm gonna snap my fingers and we'll be back here. Okay, I'm back and I've made a couple different decisions while I was away. I'm gonna share them with you. I went ahead and completed them on page four and we're gonna build them together on page five. So I took one of my ephemeras and I made a uh, photo pocket for it. Oops, I'm, I think I'm blocking it. Um, and we're gonna do the same thing on page five. So I took a large, um, I think it's vertical, um, ephemera card and created this picture window. So that's what we're going to do now on page five. So get this out of the way. And I went ahead and put the rest of the uh, design papers down so there was nothing new here. I just uh, went ahead and completed it. So I want you to notice that I've got my rows up here on the top and then I want my rows down here on the bottom. So, and I think, I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's gonna be on the bottom either way. Yeah, and so the leaves look like they're going the right direction and everything. I'm gonna have a very tight border here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here to make it easy to pull your photo out. And we are going to build that photo frame right now. So what I did was I created three one inch strips and then I scored them in half. Here's my third one. So the two sides need to be six inches. This needs to be about four inches. And we get, we're gonna trim it down to fit once we get these on. So we're going to add these right to the edge. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the um, cardstock peeking out so it looks like a mat. So I'm actually gonna do it this way. That's wrong, this way, okay. So my point is gonna to be toward the bottom. And then I'm gonna slide it over. So we've got a little bit of a border peeking out. Oops. Okay, good, good. And then I'm just gonna use scissors to trim off um, any excess once I'm finished. So I just want to make sure that's even. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Like so. Of course you could use tape if you wanted. I'm using glue because I want to slide it a little to get it right where I want it. Did 
Did I do that right? Yeah. I think I got one side in, right side up, and one side in, upside down. It doesn't really matter. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to trim off my excess because this is going to be the top. And it looks like I'm good to go there. And then I'm going to cut a diagonal here if I can. There we go. Just because there's going to be a little bit of buildup. Then the four inch one goes in across the bottom, like so. Dropping everything today. Can I flip it over so I can see a little bit better. There we go. Okay. I'm going to fold these in and then I'm going to use tape. this all together. My corners didn't come together like I hoped they would, but I'm okay with it. I just thought I forgot to hit record. Okay, now this is going to go right here, like right about there, but I'm going to pull in page four so we can look at these side by side. And then try to get these lined up as best as we can. So I'm just going to push them as close together as possible, line them up visually, and that's going to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the backing. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue so that I can wiggle it into place if I need to. to come up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Now I need to put an insert, which I've already got prepared. So the insert is three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And then the designer paper is uh, five and three quarters by three and three quarters. I had to think that through. And it should fit nicely into our pocket. It's a little bit snug, so if you're gonna put photos on this, if you're gonna do anything but journal, you might wanna make it a little bit smaller. Also, I find that once you've done it a time or two, you sort of train the pocket. It's hard to explain, but on the bottom too. You have to kind of train it. 
I think part of the problem is I'm trying to get underneath um, my hinge or my uh, the side of my pocket instead of going inside of it. There we go. There we go. I can see it's was getting stuck. Okay, I need to go in a little further. stuck on because the ruler feels like it's gone all the way down. Well, I'm going to work that in. It's It should go all the way in and just barely have the butterfly exposed. Okay, there we go. Page four, page five. Eh, I'll probably do a little something here. I just don't know what. That's it. Calling it a wrap.